Welcome to Local Edition. I'm Tracy Young. In the 1950s, the United States was largely energy independent. Today, we import 60% of the oil we use every day. And as recently as 1998, oil was trading at $13 per barrel. Today, it consistently trades at above $113 per barrel. And joining us to talk about a sensible 21st century energy policy is Congressman David Dreyer, who represents the 26th District. How are you, Tracy? I'm it's good. always good to be with you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having I me. I remember back in 73 and 74, we went that's through the oil born. embargo. You were born in the 73. No, but that's a good... Oh, okay. <laughs> I wish. I was thinking that. <laughs> Um, we were cut off from our oil resources, and we really knew what it felt like to not have a large part of oil. We're much more dependent on oil today than we were. France got the clue. They now have about 80% of their energy is from nuclear. If France gets an A, what grade do you give the United States and why? Well, Tracy, uh, we'd have to get uh, an F when it comes to pursuing uh, energy security for ourselves. You know, when you say the word nuclear, people think of Three Mile Island. Sure. They think about all of these horrible, horrible disasters that we've had in the past. But, you know, I've been to the gas station today. I will tell you that just to see the price of gasoline is uh, horrendous. And the people of Southern California suffer more than most people across the country. And we have some of the highest of gas prices right. except for Hawaii in the nation. That's exactly right. And so that's why I believe that we need to pursue, as you said at the outset here, a 21st century policy. And it needs to be done in a bipartisan way, Democrats and Republicans alike. Nuclear power is not a left-right, Democrat, Republican issue. As you said, France has traditionally had a leftist government up until the election of President Sarkozy. And uh, yet 80% of their energy is provided by nuclear. And nuclear is the cleanest, safest, most cost-effective energy source. And in this 21st century, there are steps for that can enhance the safety and the security of it, but it's been 30 years, mm. 30 years since we built a nuclear power plant, and 30 years, Tracy, since we built a new oil refinery in this country. You're leading me to something, is that there are two big oil sources in the United States. One is, the I always have to look at, the Green River Formation, right. which is Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, and the Bacon. We think the Green River might have as much as two trillion barrels of yeah. oil in it. This Maybe is this we can North get Dakota find that people have been talking about And then the North Dakota one is the Bacon one. Hold on a second. But Saudi Arabia is supposed to have 264 million, not billion, but mm. million. So we have substantially more oil. Should we be angry at countries that are willing to tap their resource and sell it to us and we're mad at the price they're charging us, or should the anger be at ourselves for not tapping our resource? You know, before we went on the air, I was joking that when we point the finger of blame at somebody, you've got to remember that there are three fingers being pointed back at you. Rather than pointing the finger of blame at somebody else, we need to look at ourselves. And again, this needs to be done in a bipartisan way. We need to encourage alternative, alternative energy sources, coal to liquid. We need to do all of those sorts of things. But what we need to do is recognize that we have tremendous potential for responsible, environmentally sound energy exploration right here in the United States of America. And I think that we need to pursue that as vigorously as we can. And if we could come together, I mean, the sad thing is, uh, you know, the, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, said two years ago when she was running to become Speaker that she had a common sense plan that would reduce skyrocketing gasoline Has that prices. Been produced? Well, it not only hasn't been produced, but we have said that we need to focus on nuclear energy, we need to build a new oil refinery environmentally, in, a, in an environmentally sound way. We need to pursue these alternative sources. We need to responsibly explore here Who's within to the step United up States. And do what you're saying? Well, you know, I, I just, in late April, I, I mean, I have called on the Speaker to say that what we need to do, and I offered with my colleagues an amendment on the House floor to uh, one of the several, several rules that would say that we should have an open debate on this mm -hmm. issue and we should allow so you can any look proposal at all the sources? any proposal that would reduce gasoline prices needs to come to the floor of the house and it needs to be done immediately. I recently saw the Trucker Association testify before Congress saying it costs them twelve hundred dollars now to fill up their trucks. It's outrageous. It's affecting everyone. And we're all paying the price, whether it's through groceries, whether I mean this this slowed economy that we're facing is in large part due to increased gasoline and other energy prices. We need to turn the corner on it, and we need to work together to do it, and I'm determined to do that. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Tracy. 